Hello everybody and welcome to my episode 6 breakdown for GG Season 3. I've been out of town since the episode premiered and I've been so excited to break this one down because it was such a good episode. And it is linked in the description if you somehow haven't seen it yet because there are heavy spoilers ahead. This is also going to be my first review with some extra personal footage in it because I feel like I have something to add finally to what everyone saw on the show. So let's jump straight into it, the challenge and the ensuing drama. A little fun tidbit to start off, Soup counted down the start of the challenge in the in-game chat, and he typed 2, 1 at the same pace, and then he got spam filtered when he was going to say go. So I was tried to like preempt when he was going to say go based on the speed that he was typing, and I just speared Zoe early since go never popped up. And then after that, Soup said okay to reset us, and a ton of people assumed that was the actual go signal, so then they all speared each other and started running. And I mean, I think this left some people a little frustrated, but I thought it was hilarious. On it, we gotta go. We gotta click first. Yep, yep, yep. We gotta get that insta reaction. Yep. On go, on go. <laughs> get your clicks ready. Oh, I fucking cheated. What's this? <laughs> Man, you're trolling. He said okay. Oh my god. <laughs> no trigger discipline in here. <laughs> well, we know the we know the plans on both sides. For the actual challenge, I was super confident. I've been through the underground pass probably at least a hundred times. And I got off to a good start. You know, I was in third place, I think, and as you all probably saw, I fell off the ledge. Twice. It took like, I think six and a half minutes, maybe seven, to run normally through the pass to the finish line with the PvP going, and I lost over a minute to failing the obstacle. So like 15-20% of the entire time it takes to do the challenge was just me falling off the obstacle. Um, and after the second one, I'd pretty much given up hope. You know, I didn't figure I'd see anyone else, but it was a long race, so I figured I'd keep at it. And I actually caught up to almost the entire pack, and then I missed path a little bit. And that maybe cost me like one placement, but I managed to spear and bind both Bodhi and then Eviescape to pass them up. So I was really happy with my performance, despite my horrible RNG on the ledge obstacle. And I really appreciated actually that Eviescape shouted me out in his confessional about the comeback, because even in a PvP world with all the added chaos, I feel like it probably shouldn't have happened. Anyway, I crossed the finish line, Eviescape crosses. Bodhi crosses, and the challenge is over. Or so we think. Because then Torvesta comes strolling in way late, and Skill Specs immediately calls him out. So Jay was raging like the last 30 seconds or so of his run, because Torvesta was just griefing the absolute hell out of him. And I'd also noticed earlier that he tried to bind me as I was starting to catch up with the pack, but it wasn't like obvious griefing at that point. Our team realized, though, that we'd been griefed, and we called him out, Torvesta, and his response was he literally just left the call. Like, I figured that he may have been able to defend himself if he'd said something like, oh, I was just trying to mess with skill specs, like, you know how it is, me and Jay, whatever. But he didn't even try. He just stayed muted and just dipped out of the call without a word. Is that okay. it? Is that GG? Is that yeah. Yeah, I think we won. Crazy. I think we oh, won. That was pretty close. We got a lot of high odds. odds. They had the last two. Let me, uh, 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 wait, who's that? Wait, oh. <laughs> never wait. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, yeah, actually a snake. Yeah, Alex griefed us really hard. Yeah, he really did. Intentionally. Yeah. Well, we pick who goes in from our team if we lose, so. Yeah. GL. Yeah. Pop up. And uh, Soup announced the score. We lost by five points. And really, had Torvesta not thrown, even if he just did the challenge but performed really poorly, like last place, we almost surely would have won the challenge. Like, there's almost no situation in which, if he weren't actively griefing us and hurting our placement in addition to his, that we we like we just would have won if he didn't do that. At this point, I want to share my opinion on the throw. I think that it was a really poor decision by Torvesta, even though it ended up working out for him and his alliance. Because if he didn't throw and our team won the challenge, then he just would have been safe. And on the losing team, if this happened, Eviescape would have been safe because he had the amulet of power from winning the previous week's banning. So 
their alliance would have controlled that losing team's vote, guaranteeing one of them wouldn't be voted in. And I assume they'd have picked Framed, who was the only one from the NA alliance on their side. So the worst case here then would have been that Frame's team from the winning side would have selected one of Torresta's minor alliance members, like probably Zoe or Vertoso, to try to give Kevin as good of a matchup as possible. But the thing is, bannings are always a toss-up until they're announced. Like, yeah, sure, they could be PBM, maybe PvP, maybe game knowledge, but they could also just be pure RNG or even or something like pretty close to RNG, close enough that like you can't be sure that you'd get a win. And I have to imagine that given more time to think and discuss with his alliance, I really doubt that Torvesta would have made the choice to throw the challenge. Because risking a minor alliance member for a chance to just completely behead the opposing alliance, take out their leader, seems like, to me at least, the way better gamble than to risk yourself in a potentially RNG banning as one of the leaders of your alliance against, you know, some minor member of the other alliance, even if it seems like it should be one that's in your favor. Anyway, I'll move on to the voting portion, and of course, as usual, the DMs. So as a little background, and I touched on in the episode, my understanding of the seven-man challenge team I was on is like this. We have Settled, 8SAT, and Skill Specs, pretty much as guaranteed NA Alliance members. And then Framed also assured me that Solo is voting with him. So that leaves, from what I know, Torvesta and Tasty from the other alliance that could vote against us. And then there's me. So even if I vote with Torvesta's side, my interest in keeping Framed and his allies out of the banning remain protected as long as those other four votes go in onto Torvesta. To kick things off for the day, before the challenge, I hit Eviescape up and offered to vote with them. This was just following up on last week where he reached out to me, asking if I wanted to... I guess not quite join his alliance, but vote with him. And I think joining the alliance is sort of implied. And he just says, perfect, he'll keep me posted. In the meantime, Solo Mission messages me, telling me to vote for Torvesta if he did indeed lose us a challenge by throwing. And this is before the results came out, but I agree. So we get confirmation that we lost the challenge 55 to 50, and Evie messages me back and orders the 8-sat vote. I follow along, and I vote for him like he wanted because currying favor with Eviescape has become very important to me. For one, his alliance looked like it had the majority on the winning team, and voting with them would keep me out of the banning, because they can select one person to send straight in. If he thinks I'm with them, then his majority isn't going to pick me, they'll pick someone else. And secondly, if Frames Alliance were to lose one more member, suddenly things would be getting a little skewed, and as far as I can tell... The people who were in Eviescape's alliance would be starting to outnumber the ones in Frame's alliance because I already don't know if I can really trust Solo Mission. So if he's not voting with them and they were to lose one of these members, all of a sudden you're sitting here looking at a massive disadvantage in the alliances. So if, like, worst case, Frame's alliance is really starting to struggle, I don't want to be caught supporting them when the other alliance just destroys them. I'd much rather be low on the totem pole with this one and have a chance to not get focused for the next few weeks than to go down with this ship on this side. So as you all saw, I went through with my plan and I put my vote on 8sat, knowing that Torvesta would go in anyway. Right after the voting, I messaged Framed and I let him know what I'd done. Assuming he and his alliance were tracking votes, they should have expected a 5-2, which is what I was originally expecting, and it should be obvious then that someone snaked them when it ended up 4-3. I revealed myself to be the snake vote while still claiming they could trust me to double-cross Eviescape. What this does, hopefully, in my mind, is it lets them keep focusing on attacking the other alliance and keeping things even, rather than rooting out an unknown rat spending like time and effort and maybe even votes or you know a direct banning choice next week on rooting out someone within them. I'll just tell them, hey, it was me, I knew that 8 out would be safe. You can count on me to get in with Eviescape and still work for you. Let's keep focusing them together. Frames Alliance have become the minority at this point, so if they have any doubts about me, they can't really afford to act on them. Like, if they're really mad at me, I guess maybe that would overtake it and they'd do it anyway. But it really wouldn't be smart, and I hope they realize that. And then I also threw in a mention that I didn't tell Solo about this, because I don't know how much info Framed shares with Solo Mission, 
but I know that he shared a lot with me and I joined the Alliance late and everything. So I really don't want him sharing this info with someone I trust as little as Solo Mission. Because for all I know, that info is going straight to someone else I can't trust. And all of a sudden, my position between the Alliance is compromised. So the vote goes exactly how I planned. 4-3, 8-sat safe, Torvesta goes in. But my vote was on 8-sat for this exact reason. Eviscate messages me, this is after the challenge, after the banning. And he says, now I know I got your vote. We're good. So Evie confirms they know that I voted with them even though I still got the outcome that I wanted of Torvesta going into the banning. And he also confirms my suspicion that he's the one that's been leading his alliance and tells me he'll keep me updated. I decide to share here that I have a pretty good amount of information, I think, and I bring up that we're about even with Frames Alliance. Jake says it's nowhere near even and mentions having a huge majority. Now, this could be posturing, which he's obviously done a lot of in the games. You know, it's been like his MO for the entire time so far. But now that I'm in their alliance, it seems sort of unnecessary. Like, he shouldn't need to intimidate me or anything because I've agreed to vote with him. But that said, he also tells me that no one in the games is solo. Which, I mean, I know for a fact that that's not true. I know at least Bodhi and Will are solo. So it's clear to me that I'm still being lied to or that somehow Jake has like no information, which seems a lot less likely. So I want to keep gathering information from him and from everyone else I can get it from, but it's just kind of a reminder to take everything with a grain of salt because it seems like he's knowingly lying to me about this because there's no way he doesn't know at least that Bodhi is solo, for example. Then Evie does confirm that Skillspecs voted for Torvesta and goes on to say that I've earned his trust. He gives me an interesting piece of information here too, where he says, we didn't realize voting was working that way. Voting went exactly how I thought it was going to again, just like last week. So either I have more information than Evie does, or someone's doing some snaking. Because as I expected, the vote went 4-3. And in my head, you've got Solo Mission, Framed, Settled, and 8-Sat voting for Torvesta. Boom, four votes, he's in. And then me, Tasty, and Torvesta voting for 8-Sat. Three votes, he's safe. Now, I didn't know that Solo and Tasty were actually swapped here. But for all intents and purposes, really, it's exactly the same to me. You get that 4-3 vote, and the same number of people I can trust are on each side doing what I expect them to. So the fact that Evie says this is like, out, like in my head, it's like, how else did you think that voting would work then? And I'm not quite sure. Then lastly, I just let Jake know that Skill Specs was in with the Framed Alliance, as far as I knew. So he... Never had a chance of winning that vote if he was counting on Jay to help send eights that in. The bending's already happened, and you know he's collected a lot of the information he's already going to have collected. My goal here was just to provide him some more information that made me seem trustworthy. I'm basically selling out skill specs, but skill specs is already out of the game, so I'm not doing him any harm. I'm not really hurting the framed alliance either. I'm basically just trying to say, hey, I have useful information, I'm worth keeping around, and now you have my vote. So... Hopefully the interesting from him is a good sign, and I figure he probably went and tried to double check that with someone else, see if that information lines up with something someone else in his alliance knows. Then one last thing for the DM section, I did a little work after the day's filming and hit up Will. I wanted to ask him about getting into alliance in case if I really needed like one vote to swing something to help the framed alliance keep things even, get somebody from the EV Torvesta alliance into a banning, he maybe could help me out. And unfortunately, I mean, he just wasn't really interested. He turned me down, confirmed he was solo, and I shared Evie's take that no one is solo. And he replied by telling me about the winner's call, where Evie used his control of the vote to send skill specs straight in. Will's like, well, I'm in there and I'm solo, Bodhi's solo, and one other person is solo. Which, I mean, I know that is framed, who's the leader of the alliance I've been voting with until this episode. And that tells me that Evie, Vertoso, Zoe, and Foe, the other four people on the team, are the four that Evie has. So this finally fully confirms to me that Foe is on Evie and Torvesta's side, which I'd had a suspicion about, but had never actually gotten any proof of. So it was really helpful for me to be able to then mentally take Foe here and slide him fully uh okay sorry that was like really terrible but <laughs> slide him fully over onto this side in this alliance slot him in 
So really now I've got like a guarantee that these five here, Eevee, Torvesta, Vertoso, Zoe, and Fo, in my head they're guaranteed votes here. And I also think Tasty is. So I see this alliance as having like five, maybe six members like solid versus this episode, we've lost skill specs. Now we're looking at the NA Alliance and it's looking pretty barren over here. So for now, I'll drop the politics and just talk about the banning. The banning was absolutely incredible. I don't have any footage of my own, but I mean, you can see like I'm over there in the back. We got, we got everyone here. So a lot of the bannings, like people would have to go, people would be busy, it'd be nighttime, they'd have to go to sleep, whatever. So a lot of people wouldn't stick around for bannings. But for this banning, almost every single competitor stayed in Discord and we were all just sitting there watching like every hit taking taking deep breaths like sighing gasping like you know yelling when somebody got some crazy hit everyone was so hyped for this banning and if i recall correctly actually something that wasn't too obvious i think from the edit in the show was that skill specs kind of threw so he won the first round 1-0 and then in the second round he was up 1-0 and he got kind of like goaded in by Torvesta to hitting Alex when he should have eaten instead. And then two hits later, Jay died to an axe that just barely killed him. It overkilled him like three health, I think. He got hit maybe a 49 and he had 46 HP. So if he had played it safe and eaten two rounds earlier, he'd have been at 66, been hit a 49, and he would have lived and had a chance to either eat again, be at 39, have a decent chance of living, or maybe even just go for the hit on Torvesta who I'm pretty sure was out of food and like mid 40s HP. Um, so he may still have lost the fight to RNG, but he definitely let Torvesta get in his head a little bit and poke at him. And he made an overly risky choice that came back to bite him. And so honestly, I think this challenge easily could have ended 2-0. Skill specs wins. You know, all of a sudden he's not eliminated. You get this alliance chart where it's four here and one of the main members of this one are gone. And all of a sudden you have four, maybe five here, four here. Like everything is perfect, fine and dandy. The alliances are even, all my plans are gonna be realized. But instead, sometimes things just happen. Skill specs maybe makes a really rash decision instead of the safe play when he has a lot of food left. And I think he even died with like three or even four sharks left maybe. He had like multiple food left when he died during that fight. So it was pretty, it was pretty wild. Um, but yeah, all the same, what a banning. Like, it was the classic Torvesta versus Skill Specs matchup, you know? It was a DH fight, like, oh man. The format and the players participating aren't scripted. Like, they genuinely aren't, you know, none of this is scripted. None of the results are scripted, but if they were, I don't think a single thing would have changed about this banning. Like, yeah, I mean, it was just an instant classic. And Torvesta takes the win. So the result of the banning actually was really bad for me. Because remember, my goal is that the alliances stay even. All of a sudden, someone consistently who's been voting with the framed alliance, like he claimed to be solo, but he'd been voting every week with framed and the NA alliance. He's gone. So now this side is looking really sparse. The only consistent members of the alliance left that I know I can count on to vote together are framed, settled, and eight set. On a good day, they have me, and then they may have Solo, and may have Tasty, potentially, but it seemed to me like it was one or the other of these, and I was thinking it was Solo. So basically, we're in a situation here, with skill specs gone, where it's at best a 5 versus 6, with the two independent here in the middle, Bodhi and Will, and... I wasn't even able to confirm the votes in the past two weeks between Solo Mission and Tasty because of how Solo Mission split his vote the previous week. So my information is pretty good, but it's not perfect. And that worries me because I'd love to be able to count on more votes on frame side to be able to keep the alliances even. And going forward, I do still want to support the NA Alliance here. I think we can keep things as even as possible and keep up with the plan. Because between double votes for getting like second and third in challenge, and then both alliance leaders' information sometimes being really inaccurate, it seems like there's a chance. Like 
both framed and eviescape have told me things that are just like blatantly false and sometimes it seems like they might be lying but other times it's just seemed like they were wrong because they didn't have all the information so they say like i mean eviescape will say well i know exactly who voted for whom but he's already proven that that's not true so i think there's still some room for some snakery some getting votes here and there to maybe depending on who wins a challenge, who gets double votes, still continue to chip away at the EVscape Torvesta Alliance, which is what I want to do and what I really need to do. All in all, though, I really like my position in the games after this episode. I think that to move in the middle of the two alliances successfully, like I've been doing all season and Solo Mission has been working at all season, you basically have two options. You can either be sneaky and play to double cross people, you know, you trust your wits, you get other people confused, and you count on that to keep you safe. And that's like from, you know, GG season two and so far this season, that's like textbook solo mission. And the fact that he's still in the games and getting no votes, like he's literally gotten zero votes, even when he's not been immune recently, like it suggests he's been doing what he does best and no one does it better. But then the other option playing between the two alliances is to communicate openly you know you talk to the big dogs you share information that makes you seem trustworthy and then you act ignorant whenever like doubt is cast on you or it seems like you might know too much and what this does in my opinion is they see you as someone who could maybe provide some useful information here and there but more importantly they see you as a loner with no allies who is easy to manipulate because you have no backup and that's me the only way that this strategy really could backfire is if the heads of each alliance somehow get info from the other side that they should never be sharing with each other. Like, I've told Framed and Eviescape things by now that like, directly contradict each other to where if they were talking to each other, like, I'd, I'd be screwed. They'd both know that I was a rat and I'd be gone in a second because neither could trust me. But as far as I can tell, that should never happen because, you know, the... The two alliance heads don't communicate with each other. They have no reason to. They're not working together. They want to keep information from each other. So hopefully everything goes smoothly. None of that gets shared. And I get to keep doing my thing. And that's about it for this one. If another member falls from frame side next week, I'll probably have to push forward with forging my new connection with Eviescape and just abandon frames alliance entirely. That should hopefully at least get me through however many weeks it would take to eliminate the stragglers from the NA Alliance. Like if Frame's gone next week, you know, it takes two more weeks to get rid of Settled Nate Sat, which is probably what Eevee's Alliance would go for before going for solos or, you know, people in their alliance that they don't necessarily trust like me. But uh, that's only the case as long as I don't get snaked by someone with a lot of information and a reason to want me out of the games. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.